in this video, we are going to count down the seven vocabulary words you must know for the chemistry regents exam. So let's get started. Number one, orbitals. You need to know what the word orbitals mean. Now, these sentences here that pertain to orbitals come directly from regents exams from the January 2019 back another three exams and you'll see that in two of the four exams you need to know what orbitals are in this first sentence one of the ways we describe orbitals is that they are found in regions of space around the nucleus and in the second it's the most probable location for an electron orbitals ties into the most recent model we have for atomic structure known as the wave mechanical model so make sure you know orbitals let's move on to number two temperature temperature and kinetic energy as it says here in the second statement go up and down together temperature is defined as the average kinetic energy of the particles that make up um, or, or the average kinetic energy of particles in a sample of matter. That is a definition for temperature you need to know for chemistry. Showed up on two of the four most current Regents exams. Make sure you know this definition. Let's go on to number three. Electrolyte. Electrolytes, as it says here, are substances when you dissolve them in water. You have a solution that conducts an electric current. Of course, the more you have a substance dissolved in water, you're going to have a better conductor. So electrolytes, those are your salts that dissolve in water, your acids, and your bases that dissolve in water. So know the word electrolyte and what it means. Let's move on to the next one, and that is allotropes. Now this is very interesting because the word allotrope has not shown up on the regents. But what allotropes are, are two or more forms of the same element, but because they have different structures, they have different properties. So oxygen and ozone are examples, and diamond and graphite. And you see here, of uh, the last four regions exams, it showed up three out of four. So while you don't have to remember the word allotrope, you have to know same atoms, different structure, different properties. All right, let's keep moving on. Now we're up to isotopes. There's a lot of information here about isotopes, so that means it shows up pretty much on every chemistry regents exam. An isotope means you have same number of protons, so you have the same element but different number of neutrons, which means the mass numbers are different. Remember your mass numbers are protons plus neutrons but the identity of an element is coming from the number of protons so when you see the symbol and then the dash and the number you're looking at a specific isotope for that element so make sure you know the definition make sure you know how to figure out for example here number of neutrons so you would take the mass number which is neutrons plus protons you look up neon's atomic number which is 10, 20 minus 10, of course, is 10. In the case of neon 22, 22 minus 10 is 12. Again, 10 neutrons versus 12. The other thing to keep in mind about isotopes of elements, there is a neutron to proton ratio, which helps with the stability of isotopes. So as we add more and more protons to an atom, we're going to have more and more neutrons in the nucleus to keep it stable. Still counting down the seven vocabulary words you must know and know well to pass the chemistry regions. Why? Because they come up pretty much on every test. We are up to number six of seven, and that is ionization energy. Now on here you see the abbreviation IE, of course it stands for ionization energy. First thing is, 
remember the definition and here it is because it's shown up on a past regents exam more than one where the amount of energy uh, needed to remove the most loosely held electron that means the outermost electron also known as a valence electron from a mole of gaseous atoms of an element in the ground state so ionization energy has to again do with removing a valence electron from an atom and if it's an atom and you're gonna knock out an electron you're gonna end up with an ion so not only do you need to know the definition but then you need to know trends when we're talking trends we're talking about the periodic table what happens as you go across a row on the periodic table and as you go down a group so two ways you can remember this one is just to memorize it what happens to ionization energy as you go across a row ionization energy that means the energy required to knock on an electron increases and as you go down a group it decreases why does it increase as you go across because now you're adding more and more electrons to an established level and remember your noble gases starting with helium with two valence electrons and then neon on down with eight is a very stable configuration so as you're going across again it's going to take more and more energy to knock out an outermost electron including your noble gases which is going to take the most energy in any row as you go down a group what happens your valence electrons get further and further and further away from the nucleus so it takes less energy to knock one of those out and that comes or ties in rather with the last statement here as to why barium has a uh, lower ionization energy than magnesium barium is further down the group than magnesium magnesium's valence electrons are closer to the nucleus barium's farther away so as you go down a group ionization energy decreases one more thing about ionization energy when it comes to the trends with the periodic table you can look up values for ionization energies on reference table S so you could actually pick out the numbers and either have them going down a group or across a row to get your trend so don't forget you have reference table S and with that let's move to the last vocabulary word seven out of seven here shows up on every chemistry regions in recent history meaning the January 2019 and the three prior to that and it is electronegativity electronegativity is also uh, listed on reference table S there are values for every element regarding electronegativity but what is electronegativity well as a matter of fact the definition of electronegativity showed up on several regents exams one of them here this first statement electronegativity is the attraction that an oxygen atom has for electrons in a chemical bond it's not just about the attraction of electrons for oxygen it's for any atom of any element as you see here in the next sentence and you also see down here so four, three of the four regions exams was all about the definition of electronegativity the other way electronegativity has shown up on the regions exams recently has to do with bond polarity so if we take a look here at this third sentence an atom of which element reacts with an atom of hydrogen to form a bond with the greatest degree of polarity or if you're just determining bond polarity what you're going to do is you're going to look up the electronegativity values for the two different elements in the bond and subtract the values so the greatest degree of polarity means you're going to have the highest number when you subtract the two electronegativity values fluorine as you probably remember from studying chemistry has the highest electronegativity of all of the elements on the periodic table 
it is 4.0 on a scale of 0 to 4.0. So an atom of fluorine is going to attract an electron stronger than any other element. Your noble gases that are to the right of fluorine, they don't even have electronegativity values assigned to them because they don't want it to attract electrons. Another thing about electronegativity, just like ionization energy, you might see it with periodic trends, meaning what happens to electronegativity values as you go across a row of the periodic table or down a group. As you go across, electronegativity values increase, and as you go down a group, they decrease. You can always assign numbers based on reference table S. So this ends the seven vocabulary words that you have to know the meaning of. You have to know what questions are going to come up and how to answer those questions. And all I can say is just keep working hard. Keep it going over questions. Quiz yourself. Make sure you know the definitions for these seven words to start and any of the other words that show up quite a bit that you don't know from practicing questions. Make sure you write them down. Make sure you go over them. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, NY Chem Coach, please do hit the like button down below. If you like the video, if you have any suggestions, you can leave me a comment. Keep working hard, and good luck.